This woman's fate is indeed unique. When she was arrested, her neighbors, like her loving husband, could not believe that their extraordinarily kind, friendly and affectionate her mind was in fact one of the bloodiest Nazi criminals. You're watching X War History Channel, and today we are gonna tell you about Hermine Braunsteiner, one of the worst Nazi criminals. The future sadist was born in 1919. The girl had a very pleasant appearance and dreamed of becoming a nurse. Her family was not wealthy, however, so she had to settle for rather modest earnings. For a while, Braunsteiner worked as a waitress, then two years as a housekeeper in England, and upon returning, got a job at one of the Heinkel factories. Obviously, though, the good life required money, and her mind became interested in recruiting girls to work in the concentration camps. Advertising posters assured that it would pay five times more than in the factory, so Braunsteiner did not hesitate to sign up as a volunteer for the SS volunteer squad. The future warder gained experience in the Ravensbrück concentration camp, where her mentor was one of the most famous executioners, Mandel, commandant of the women's section. It is true that after three years, because of a disagreement with her mentor, Hermine requested a transfer. The request was granted, and Hermine eventually ended up in the infamous Majdanek concentration camp. This is where Braunsteiner's sadistic talents showed themselves in all their colors. Soon enough, Hermine became the second person in the women's section of the camp, the senior warden. She was so incredibly cruel that even her fellow guards were openly frightened of her. Hermine's favorite pastimes were sorting prisoners to be sent to the gas chamber and separating children and mothers. The sadists did not even allow the unfortunates to spend their last night together before their execution. Many inmates told how Braunsteiner amused herself by taking their offspring from their mothers and grabbing them by the hair and throwing them into the back of the car. But most of all, Hermine loved to kick the prisoners to death. For greater effect, she even ordered her shoes to be shod. For that, at Majdanek, Braunsteiner was nicknamed the Stomping Mare and the Mare of Majdanek. In practice, she was the undisputed mistress of the women's section of the camp, allowing herself whatever her mind wished. The Stomping Mare never parted with her whip, often beating inmates to death or beating them to death in such a way so that the unfortunate soon died of unbearable torment. The merits of sadism and mutilation could not go unnoticed in Nazi Germany, so a year later, in 1943, the mayor of Majdanek was awarded the Iron Cross second class, and soon she was returned to Ravensbrück. Only this time it was no longer a downgrade, but a promotion, connected with the evacuation of the Majdanek camp. And in the death camp, the pathological sadist and executioner also continued to abuse prisoners. As one of the prisoners recalled, I saw her mind inflict 25 strokes with her lash on a young girl suspected of sabotage. Her back was practically torn, but I was not allowed to give the poor girl first aid. Braunsteiner is a pathological sadist. She simply enjoyed killing and torturing. On May 7, 1945, Stomping Mare managed to escape as did many camp employees. Moreover, Hermine managed to return to Vienna, where she was soon arrested and tried by a British military tribunal. However, the Sedis managed to conceal her true service record, so she received a fairly short sentence of only three years for her work in Ravensbrück. After her release, Braunsteiner worked as a waitress and met her future husband, Russell Ryan, while working. In 1959, when the young couple married, they moved to the United States. And then the most extraordinary thing began. Braunsteiner, in a short time, earned a reputation as the sweetest, kindest and most understanding woman. She adored children, neighbors could leave her without fear to look after their own children, and her mind's cooking skills were always appreciated by, to say the least, quite a few people. In general, Braunsteiner was simply the ideal housekeeper and an absolutely faithful, loving wife. But all hidden things come to light. In 1964, the American reporter Joseph Leviland called to the apartment of Braunsteiner. Shortly before the visit, Nazi hunter Simon Wiesenthal reported to several American publications that the infamous sadist from Majdanek was living quietly on American soil. What was most interesting was how Stomping Mare reacted to this visit. Oh God, I knew this was going to happen. You came after all. When her husband and neighbors learned that the pleasant and welcoming 45-year-old woman was, in fact, a Nazi executioner, they simply could not believe it. In spite of everything, however, hearings began in an American court regarding Braunsteiner's extradition to the Federal Republic of Germany to be tried for her crimes. At the trial, the mayor from Majdanek claimed that she had been hospitalized for eight months of her entire service in a concentration camp and was simply mistaken for someone else. I was mistaken with someone. 
Even a spider is frightening for me to crush. When I find it at home, I take the insect out into the yard on a newspaper. An American court tried the case for about nine years, and the inconsolable husband told reporters that it was some kind of mistake. In 1973, though, Braunsteiner was deprived of her citizenship and exiled to Germany. But her husband managed to grant bail, so Stomping Mare was free again before the trial. By the way, Ryan did not believe in the guilt of his wife until the last moment. To one American correspondent, he even said, You're clearly wrong. My wife wouldn't hurt a fly. She's the most decent person on earth. Yes, her mind served somewhere out there, but she was drafted. She had to fulfill her duty. The trial of 15 Nazi criminals, also including Braunsteiner, who committed atrocities in the Maidanic concentration camp, began in 1975. In the jurisprudence, the session itself was quite unique. The thing is that when the witnesses described the deeds of the mayor of Maidanic, on the very first day the judge felt bad about what he had heard, and the hearing was rescheduled. Wiesenthal himself later recounted this. On the first day when Frau Braunsteiner was put on trial in Germany, the hearing had to be suspended. The judge was sickened by the witnesses' accounts of the things that Warden had done to the children at Majdanek. Altogether, the investigation provided evidence that Braunsteiner had personally beaten to death 102 female prisoners and 80 children. Circumstantial evidence suggested that of the 78,000 victims of Majdanek, several thousand were also on the conscience of the mayor who often decided their fate single-handedly by sending them to the gas chambers. It's hard to believe, but the trial lasted a full six years. Based on the evidence provided, Hermine Braunsteiner was sentenced to life imprisonment for her crimes. The interesting thing is that the former chief warder was outraged by the verdict, stating, Even if I hit someone 40 years ago, do I really need to be punished for that today? In confinement, the former sadist's only joy was the sweets, handed to her by her faithful spouse. The unfortunate prisoner could eat up to three cakes a day. Eating the past, in huge portions of cakes and other sweets, Braunsteiner eventually became seriously ill with diabetes, so much so that she had to have her leg amputated. This instantly prompted the lawyers to demand clemency. In the end, the mayor of Majdanek was released from prison in 1996. However, it was no longer possible for the reunited couple to live in peace. Upon learning that the warden had left the prison, the surviving prisoners and their children staged a genuine terror against the house. The walls, doors and gates were constantly scrolled with inscriptions such as Executioner, Sadist and ETC. Hermine's husband even complained to journalists that he was spending huge sums on constant repairs to the facade and fence. And finally, on April 19th of 1999, in the last year of the millennium, Hermine died from the effects of diabetes. Thus ended the journey of the bloody warden of Majdanek. After this incident, a special investigations unit was established at the US Department of Justice, the purpose of which was to avoid granting citizenship to former Nazi criminals. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to X War History and also leave a like.